Sins of the heart Ya Allah, save me from From the sins of the heart Ya Allah, save me from From the sins of the heart Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Mursaneen Amma ba'd Fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytuani r-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله Welcome back to this program Sins of the Heart Inshallah in today's episode we're going to discuss regarding arrogance What is arrogance? What does Islam say about arrogance? First let's listen to a blessing of sending درود upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم has said that whoever recites this following درود my intercession will become wajib for him necessary and that is اللهم صل على محمد وأنزله المقعد المقربة Oh Allah, descend your blessings upon the noblest Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and grant him the great closeness in your court on the Day of Judgment. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sahabihi wa barik wa sallam. Arrogance. What is arrogance? First, let's listen to the definition of arrogance. Arrogance is to undermine other people while considering yourself to be better than them. The Holy Prophet ﷺ stated, Arrogance is to reject the truth and belittle other people. Imam Raghib explained, Arrogance is for a man to consider himself better than other people. An arrogant person is called a Mutakabbir in Arabic. The Holy Quran states in part 40, Surah An Nahl, verse 23, Inna hu la yuhibbul mustakbirin. Indeed, he does not like the proud ones. And in part of 15, Bani Israel, verse 37, Wala tamshi fil ardi maraha, inna ka lang tahrik al arda, wa lang tabulu al jibala tula. And do not walk haughtily on the earth. You can never split the earth, nor be as high as the hills. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated, On Day of Judgment, arrogant people will appear in the size of ants. They will be humiliated from all directions and dragged to a prison in hell called Bulas. Surrounded by a huge fire, they will be forced to drink Dinatul Khabar, meaning the pus of hell's enemies. Allahu Akbar. My dear viewers of Madrid, inshallah, look at this punishment. That if a person is arrogant, if a person shows his pride and he's arrogant, he belittles people, and then the punishment of that person, why is it? He will drink the pus of the inmates of hell. And there are three types of arrogance. Arrogance against Allah. And this type of arrogance is infidelity. Like the infidelity of Pharaoh who said, "Ana Rabbukum al-Aala, fa'akhazahu Allah nakal al-Akhira wal-Ula," and he said, "I am your most supreme Lord. Allah therefore sees him in the punishment of this world and the hereafter." In order to guide Pharaoh, Allah subhanahu wa taala sent Sayyidina Musa kalimullah and Sayyidina Harun, but Pharaoh rejected them both, so Allah subhanahu wa drowned him. And his followers into the river Nile. Honorable Quranic commentators have explained Allah made the river throw out Pharaoh onto his bank like a dead buffalo in order to make him a symbol of divine admonition for the remaining Israelites and other nations and to make them realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes tyrants and people who exhibit arrogance against him by casting them into the depths of humiliation and disgrace. Second type of arrogance is against the prophets of Allah. This type of arrogance is also infidelity. It is when someone opposes a prophet due to arrogance, ignorance, 
animosity. In other words, for someone to think, I am superior and honorable, why should I obey a man who just like other humans? So infidels arrogantly utter the following about the Holy Prophet Is this the one who Allah sent as a messenger? The third type, arrogance against anyone other than Allah and his beloved, meaning to consider yourself superior to others whilst belittling them, wanting to assert your authority over them and detesting equality with them. Even though this category is not as bad as the first two, yet it is also forbidden haram and a major sin because greatness and superiority only befit the true king rather than the weak and feeble humans. There's once an extreme sinner amongst the Israelites who once walked past a very devout worshipper who was so pious that clouds shaded him in the sun due to his piety. The sinner thought to himself in his heart, I am a grave sinner amongst the Israelites. And this is an extremely pious man. If I sit with him, then hopefully Allah will have mercy on me. With this in mind, he sat with the worshipper. The worshipper, however, disapproved and thought to himself, this sinner is nothing compared to me. How on earth has he dared to sit with me? After this, the devout man rudely instructed the sinner, get away from me. Following that, Allah just sent a revelation to the Prophet ﷺ of that era. Tell both of these men to begin their deeds from start. I have forgiven the sinner for his good opinion about me and I have erased the devout man's good deeds due to his arrogance. Allahu Akbar. And arrogance has many causes and for each cause it occurs. The first cause of arrogance is knowledge. Sometimes a man becomes arrogant due to possessing excessive knowledge. The cure for which is for you to contemplate about the eventual consequence of the devil who was one of the teachers of the angels. He arrogantly considered himself to be better than Sayyidina Adam Safiullah and her Nabina But as a result of this arrogance, he will be humiliated and disgraced till judgment day and is destined for hell. What if arrogance ruins us too? The second cause of arrogance is worship and religious practices. Sometimes a man, a person becomes arrogant due to excessive worship and religious services. The cure for this is for you to tell yourself, if I worship excessively, then what great quality of mine is this? Rather, this is one of the favors of my Lord upon me. As well as this, I must not forget that only worship which are accepted are the ones that are sincere and carried out with all their conditions. You should frighten yourself by thinking this worship that I am so proud of, what if due to my arrogance it is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Instead of being accepted, moreover, what if it leads me to hell instead of heaven? The third cause of arrogance is wealth. Someone who has a car, a bank balance and servants is likely to become arrogant. The cure for this is for you to believe with complete certainty that one day you will most surely depart from this world empty-handed without all these assets. Whilst your shroud will not include a valuable bag, or your grave, a storage safe. Your grave can only be enlightened by the rays of good deeds rather than the sparkle of gold, silver or money. Therefore, why are you displeasing your maker Zawajal, by being arrogant over these mortal objects? The fourth cause of arrogance is family bloodline or oh, genealogy. Sometimes a person boasts about his forefathers while undermining other people on this basis. The cure for this it's for you to discipline yourself in this way. It is unwise to be proud of other people's achievements. In fact, this is ignorance. People who boast about their forefathers have been warned about ending up in hell. Hence the Holy Prophet stated, Nations who boast about their deceased forefathers should abstain from this because they are the fuel of hell. Or oh, these nations will be both inferior than filthy insects that scrape dirt with their noses. Allah has eliminated from you the arrogance and boasting over forefathers from the age of ignorance. Now man is either pious and a believer or a sinner and unfortunate. All people are the offspring of Hazrat Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasalam and Hazrat Adam alayhi salam was created from sight. The fifth cause of arrogance is status and seniority. The cure for this is for you to tell yourself being proud of a short term quality is foolish. How long will you maintain your status and authority for? What if tomorrow you lose the status that you are so proud of today? 
Subsequently, you will have to go around hiding your face from these very same people that you undermine today. Tomorrow, you might need help from one of these very people that you scream orders at today, which will consequently annihilate your arrogance. For this reason, you should never forget your true status, no matter what position or authority you have. Sixth cause of arrogance is success and accomplishment. When an individual repeatedly succeeds, he begins to undermine successful people. The cure for this is for you to never forget that circumstances never remain the same. People who reach tall heights often descend back to the earth for every success there is failure. Whilst being successful, you should thank Allah rather than become self-conceited and undermine other people. You should also tell yourself what I am considering to be success is only earthly success which will terminate one day or another. But true success is for me to depart from this earth with my faith safe, for me to prepare for the afterlife whilst on this earth and for me to please my creator. Seventh cause of arrogance is strength and power. So some people who are tall, strong, wide-chested and undermine weak-bodied people. The cure for this is for you to analyze your nafs like this. Strength, might and activeness are also the qualities of animals. In fact, animals possess these qualities more than humans. So then why be arrogant over a quality that is possessed by both animals and humans? Do not forget that our strength totally vanishes as soon as we are even slightly ill. We are unable to endure the slightest bit of heat. If Allah forbid, due to arrogance tomorrow, on the day of judgment, Allah is displeased with me and I am sentenced to the scorching heat of hell, then how will I tolerate it? When he views the money channel, we've heard the consequences, the cures of arrogance. When he views the money channel, please save yourself from this pride and arrogance. Your arrogance will not help you in the hereafter. Your arrogance will not help you in the grave or in the day of judgment. What will help you is our good deeds. And may this dua Allah subhanahu grants us ability to remove this ability from ourselves and keep us safe from being pride and arrogant. Amin. Bajahi Nabi Amin. Salu ala al Habib. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sins of the heart. Ya Allah, save me from, from the sins of the heart. Ya Allah, save me from, from the sins of the heart.